Hey, welcome back guys, JC here, and this is how you connect to your flight controller without the USB connector. I know I have the connector on these, but let's just pretend they are completely broken off. Well, if it did not pull the pads and traces off with it, then you can put a new connector back on. Just go into my repairs series of videos, and uh, it's going to be the same exact repair as uh, like when I show you how to replace your processor or a diode or anything like that. It's going to be exactly the same. Now if it did pull a pad and trace off, then this video is for you. First I want to give credit to Joshua Bardwell. He actually covered this uh, about five days ago. And if you haven't watched this video, I'm going to leave you a link to this video either way because I want to make sure credit goes to where it's due. So uh, if you look in the description, he will leave this link for you. And that will take you to this page. And what these are is... Okay, so we've got two different flight controllers. Uh, some use the CP2102 chip and driver, some use virtual COM ports. That's why I have two different ones here. I'm going to cover both of these so that way everybody is covered. If I plug in the one with the CP2102 chip and we go to ports, we see that MSP is turned on for UART1 and this applies to all CP2102 boards. What this means is uh, this is how your flight controller is communicating with your computer through UART1. That's why it's always turned on. And this is also why you don't want to put other devices on your one, at least for these types of flight controllers. If I plug in the VCP board, then we will see USB VCP plus three UARTs. And MSP is turned on for the USB VCP, which means it's not wasting a UART. And here is the problem and where this video comes from, where everyone is having problems. Before Betaflight 3.1, MSP was also turned on for UART1 automatically, whether you wanted it or not. If you did want a device on UART1, say like a, a receiver, then you would turn on your receiver and turn off MSP because you can only have one thing on a UART at a time. But with uh, 3.1 and newer, they stopped automatically turning this on. So if your USB connector broke off, then then you're kind of screwed because you can't I mean yeah we've we've got this new firmware where the uh, MSP is automatically turned on for you at one but you can't flash the firmware and this is where I get questions from uh, Joshua Bardwell's video because he didn't quite cover um, how you go about flashing this new firmware he gave us the firmware but not didn't tell you guys how to actually do it so here we go First up, CP2102 boards, and I will get to the VCP guys next. You want to take this FTDI adapter, and I'm going to leave you a link to some of these in the description to where you can find these easier. Out of these six pins, we only need four. So we've got ground on the very corner. We're going to skip a pin and then go to VCC, which is voltage. Then we've got TX, which is transmit. I know that looks like a PX, but it's really a R for RX, which is receive. On the back side, you can choose if you want, uh, coming out of this uh, voltage pin, 5 volts or 3.3 volts. All you do is just place a drop of solder in between the middle pad and the 5 volt pad. And now you have 5 volts coming out of this wire. Next, find UART number 1 on your flight controller. So on this board, we see RX1 and TX1, which means it's UART number 1. I'm going to flip this around backwards. Just remember um, the blue wire is ground. This orange wire was my 5 volt power source. Next, uh, the green wire is transmit, but transmit actually needs to go to a receive on the UART. So it's, it's flip flopped, it's backwards. So I've got transmit to receive, and then I'm going to put receive on transmit. So now if I plug this into my computer, I'm getting power to the flight controller. If we go into Betaflight, choose the right COM port, connect, and we connected. Because we're connecting to the computer through UART number one. Now for you VCP guys, that part is going to be exactly the same, but the problem is we need to flash firmware to this because we don't have the MSP turned on for any of the UARTs. So you guys will also need, in addition to the uh, serial converter, or the FTDI adapter, uh, there's, I'm sure there's many different ways of doing this. This is how I do it. Uh, these things are just as cheap as the serial converters, but it's the ST-Link V2. You've seen me use these in other videos, like when I show you 
how to replace a processor and uh, some other stuff so going to this completely ignore this side I know that I've explained this a hundred times but just in case there are any new viewers if you've already seen this you can skip this but uh, on this side we've got SWCLK which is the clock SWDIO which is inputs and outputs then ground then 3.3 or 5 volts it's going to be one or the other you don't want to use both at the same time I now have my servo wires connected in it should look like this remember you're using the pins on the bottom side not the top side and I place the power wire on the 5 volt pin so uh, as far as ground you can put this on any ground pin the 5 volt wire will go to any uh, 5 volt well any good 5 volt uh, power pin so I'm just going to use the same pins I use for my receiver you could also use any of the pins going to your uh, like your motor output pins it, it really doesn't matter now for the clock this can be written SWCLK it could be CLK it could be SWC or just C or clock I mean it, it can be written many different ways on this specific flight controller uh, on some flight controllers these are shared with other pins but it could also be pads so on this one it uses the pads right here we see SWC so that's gonna be my clock and then for the inputs and outputs it could be written SWDIO or DIO or SWD or just IO and on this fly controller it looks like SWD is on this pad right here Okay, I've got everything connected. Now, if you don't already have the STM32 ST Link utility, I'm gonna leave you a link to this web page. And uh, if you scroll down, don't worry about downloading any of these PDFs. The only thing you have to download is right here. So download it, unpack it, install it, and even if you want, you could make a desktop icon that looks something like this. I'm now going to plug this into my computer then go into the STM32 link utility. First, let's try to connect. So click target and connect. And I connected. If yours did not connect, then try entering the bootloader before you plug it in into your computer. So either jump those pads or press a button, whatever your flight controller has, then plug in the ST link into the computer and you should be in the bootloader and it should connect. You may get a warning message. If you do, just click OK. Um, the next thing we want to do is go to target and erase chip and then click OK and you have to do this otherwise it's not going to work I can verify that because if you do not erase this it will flash new firmware but you are or the MSP for you are one will not be turned on I can promise you that now that it has completely erased everything we want to uh, well we need to get the firmware so going back to this page and remember the link is on Joshua Bartle's video I these are not you can't see the name unless you hover your mouse over it so this is the uh, all-in-one racer f3 we've got the airbot f4 and uh, it's an entire list the flight controller I'm using is the airbot f4 so I would find that now there's going to be two different ones for every flight controller we've got airbot f4 dot bin airbot f4 dot hex the one you want is the dot hex so you would just double click that and click download which I've already done so we want to click on this open file and go ahead and find where you downloaded that firmware and I have mine right here so I'll click that then do target program and verify make your page look just like this and then click start and if you are one of the guys that did have to enter your bootloader you may get another warning message here just click OK okay and it's done so I can close this out unplug the ST link from the computer and remove these wires at this point it's going to be just like how we connected the uh, FTDI adapter to your flight controller on that uh, other flight controller so I'm just going to find UART number one as well as a power and ground source remember to flip flop transmit to receive and receive to transmit and you should be good
Okay, now I've got it uh, wired into my flight controller. Let's go ahead and plug her up. I'm getting power to the flight controller. Let's go into beta flight, choose the COM port, and we connected. So you're now done. My final tips are going to be from now on, on all your other flight controllers, go ahead and turn on MSP, and it doesn't have to be for your one. If you have any spare UARTs that you are not using, then just turn MSP on for that UART, and this will uh, save you from having to uh, do the entire last step that we did by flashing new firmware through the ST-Link V2. That's pretty much going to do it for this video, guys. So uh, look in the description below. I'll leave links to everything you need, as well as some other helpful videos. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again soon.